Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out to our presentation, which is Back to the Future, Fostering the Return of In-Person Tutoring. My name is Sophia. My name is Regina. And my name is Maddie. And we're all from the Edison Writing Center, which is in Alexandria, Virginia. And we're all also AC3s, which stands for Advanced Composition 3. And it means we're in our third year as tutors in the Writing Center. So in our presentation, we're going to be talking about how to return to in-person after tutoring in a virtual year. Because our school last year was completely virtual, so all of our tutoring sessions were conducted virtually. And we're also going to be talking about the problems surrounding teaching proper tutoring techniques to a class that's largely consisted of students who have only ever tutored online. And we know it can be difficult for both new and returning tutors to return back into person after tutoring online last year. So we wanted to implement tutor-led training sessions and strategies that would help us all get back to tutoring in person and most effectively reach inexperienced tutors. So our main method for introducing and reintroducing tutors into the Writing Center is tutor training. So tutor training is basically how we prepare our tutors for the school year. We help them become better writers, better tutors, and we just kind of help acclimate them to the Writing Center environment. And one of the main ways that we do this is through um, subject-specific tutoring. So as a Writing Center, we don't only focus on English class assignments, we also tutor other areas in other subjects that has anything to do with writing. So we may tutor a history paper, a math IA, a business project, anything that has to do with writing. And so to help prepare our tutors for this, some of our more experienced tutors create infographics. So for example, this year I created an infographic on how to tutor history essays. So if a lesser experienced tutor happens to tutor someone who has that assignment and maybe they're not as familiar with it, they can simply grab the infographic, skim it, look at the advice that I wrote, um, some of the rubric tips, and then just like that, they're more prepared to tutor that specific assignment. Another thing that we do is we have tutoring scenarios. So at the beginning of the year, we'll have tutors act out possible tutoring scenarios that other tutors may encounter throughout the year. So we'll have two um, experienced tutors, most likely, act out a scenario such as uh, the 2T, the person being tutored, wants to gossip. So they'll act out two different scenarios. The first scenario will be a good one, where the 2T wants to gossip and the tutor kind of hones them off of that, getting them back on task. But we also show a bad one where the tutor kind of doesn't deal with the gossip correctly, and the tutoring session kind of goes awry. So by showing both of these examples, we're allowing all the other tutors in the classroom to provide input. So for the bad one, for example, the tutors can raise their hand and say, maybe the tutor should have done this instead to help hone the 2T off of gossiping. And on the other hand, for the good one, other people in the classroom can raise their hand and talk about what the tutor did well, and they can just kind of learn from that experience firsthand how they may treat a tutoring session if that problem ever arises for them. Lastly, we also do grammar worksheets or um, other similar activities, which is a way that we foster healthy competition in our writing center. So with grammar worksheets specifically, we'll have uh, different groups in our class and they're each given a worksheet that has them focus on apostrophes or comma, things such as that. And whichever group finishes their worksheet first wins. So this is kind of a fun activity that, we, activity that we do because it helps foster competition, but you're also still learning. And in the end, we always share our answers. So even if you weren't on the winning team, you're still benefiting from the activity. And these are two pictures of the infographics that we create at the beginning of the year. So the one on the left is how to tutor uh, PALS, which is a performance assessment for different language classes at our school. So as you can see, there's a definition of what it is, some tips for uh, what the tutor may encounter on the rubric, and then just general advice. And on the right, there's one for APEC paragraphs. So if it happens to be that a tutor has never tutored this assignment, they're not completely unprepared when they go into the tutoring session. 
So for our first activity, we actually created a game called WC Bingo that is based off of our tutoring scenarios that we do in class. And for our game that we're going to have you guys play, we're going to perform a skit. And there's going to be some things that we do in the skit that are good aspects of the tutoring sessions and some things that are have gone awry in the tutoring session. And you guys are each going to get a bingo board that Maddie is going to put a link to in the chat. And you can just note off when you see those things in our skit. And you can see if something bad happens. If you would like to, you can raise your hand and come on the mic and tell us how you would fix that situation if you were the tutor. Or you can also just put it in the chat if you want to. So for our tutoring scenario bingo that you're going to get right now, for example, if you see something like gossiping in the tutoring session, you can just check that off and then we'll say, see how you would react to that situation if you were the tutor. So we'll give everyone a minute to get their bingo board. It should generate a unique one for each of you. And then Regina and I will conduct the first tutoring scenario. Okay, so if everyone's clicked on the link to get their bingo card, I think if you guys want to start the first scenario. Okay, so for this scenario, I'm the tutor and Regina is the tutee. So hello, welcome to the Edison Writing Center. My name is Sophia and I'm going to be tutoring you today. What's your name? My name is Regina. Okay, and what assignment can I help you with today? Well, I'm actually working on my English higher level essay right now. And right now I'm looking at the outline and I wanted to brainstorm how I could start my introduction. Okay, so do you have a rubric for this assignment? Yeah, I do. I can send it to you right now. Okay, that'd be great. That way we can look at it at the same time while we're working. And how much would you say you have written already? So right now I've only written an outline, but I was trying to see if I could work on my introduction during the session. Okay, and this is for an English class, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so how do you like this English class? Do you like the teacher? Do you like your classmates? Um, I love this English class. It's so interactive, but there's this girl that's next to me that she kind of gets me on track a lot. I think she's been in the writing center, actually. Really? What's her name? Um, I think her name is Lucy. Really? I think I know her. So what does she do that gets you off track? Is she annoying or what else? Um, I think she just kind of is, is just asking me a lot of questions about the assignment when the teacher has already explained it. So sometimes that gets me off track. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We started gossiping. This, we're getting off track. Let's get focused again and work on your assignment. Okay, so right. I see that you have this sentence written here that says, I love the beach. So I think you can make this sentence a lot better because I'm going to tell you exactly what to write and I want you to just copy it word for word. So okay. I'd like you to change this to, I like the sand and the ocean, period. Okay, um, the only thing is I kind of wanted to focus more on the beach and not necessarily the sand and the ocean. So do you think I can just write it my way instead? Okay, yeah, you're right. I should not be trying to change your writing. I should be tutoring, not editing. So you keep the sentence the way it is and maybe we can just reword it, add a comma here or there to make it more of a complex sentence. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so actually let's go back to this Lucy girl. Can you tell me more about her? Yeah, it's just that she's always asking me questions in class and I wanna work on my assignment, but she always takes me off track. Okay, um, sorry, now we're getting off track again. Let, let's get back to your essay, I'm so sorry. Okay, okay no, so okay. this sentence that you have written here is really well constructed. So you have, um, you have commas in the right places, and I can see that you're following the APEC format. So you have your assertion and then your proof is really well written. Um, but I, can I make one suggestion for you? Yeah, of course. Okay, so after your proof, instead of just having the proof itself, I think you should add a bit of an explanation. You should add some analysis to it. So do you think that we could brainstorm some analysis maybe? Yeah, okay, I'm thinking of something right now. I'm gonna just like write some ideas down and can you tell me what you think of them? Yeah, okay, so 
you're writing about the beach. What are some things that you like about the beach? Maybe that's how you can get started. Well, I love how calming it is and how we can go into the water at any time and just relax or read a book. So I kind of wanted to write something about how it's calming and how it like brings a sense of ambiance whenever you're at the beach. Okay, that's great. So I think if you just write that down, even if you're just jotting down notes for now, that's perfect. And we can always reword it to make it a, a higher level sentence later. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to move on to our second skit. And I guess no one got bingo. But if you did get bingo, you can just put it in the chat or raise your hand and then call off the things that you saw happen in the tutoring session. Oh, and also okay. for this next skit, I'll be the 2T and Sophia will be the tutor again. Yeah. And if no one got bingo, you guys can just continue on. You don't need to start over. OK, so welcome to the Edison Writing Center. My name is Sophia, and I'm going to be your tutor today. What's your name? Uh, my name is Maddie. OK, and what are you working on today? Um, I think I just have to do this English paper, but I haven't really done anything at all. OK, um, do you have any ideas of what you want to start with? Honestly, not really. I'm just here because my teacher told me I had to come here. So is there a way you could just sign this paper for me and then I can kind of do my own thing? So unfortunately, I can't just sign off on you coming to the Writing Center if I don't tutor you. But even if you don't have anything started yet, I think we can just start to brainstorm together. Maybe come up with a few good ideas. How does that sound? OK, yeah. OK, so do you have um, your assignment topic? Do you have a rubric of what you're supposed to be doing? Um, yeah, here's the rubric. It's just supposed to be about the Great Gatsby. OK, so have you learned about the Great Gatsby? Do you know anything about it? Yeah, I do. But can you help me? Because I really just need an A on this essay because I haven't been doing well. OK, so unfortunately, I can't promise that you'll get an A. But I can tell you that if we sit here and work on this essay together, we can help make it flow better, maybe change a few things that'll make your grade higher than it would be if you had not come to the Writing Center. Does that sound good? I guess it does. OK, so maybe if we start brainstorming, you can do some research on The Great Gatsby and we can start writing some bullet points. OK. OK, so do you have any resources that you could use? Not really. OK, so how about we look for some resources together? Um, I know this good one. That's a website we used when I was in that English class. So maybe you can take a look at that. Um, sure. OK. Um, and then once you're done with the brainstorming process, do you know what kind of essay you're going to write? Is it going to be APEC format? Do you know what you're going to include? I think it's supposed to be APEC, but I'm not really sure. OK, so unfortunately, we're out of time right now, but I'm glad you got some brainstorming done. And I think you should come back to the Writing Center soon and I'll help you out some more. OK, great. So someone actually got bingo and I think someone else just got bingo. So that was great, guys. And basically, this is just an example of what we would do in class to help our new tutors just learn about how they can handle different situations. And hopefully this learned you taught you some different ways that you can handle some situations when they go awry in a tutoring session. But this was just a good example of that, of how we would implement this strategy in our writing center. OK, so the next part of our presentation is going to be about how we're implementing these new strategies um, and really getting the students involved in the writing center. So first off, we have provide a lot of leadership opportunities for the tutors within the writing center. So we have committees, which are smaller groups of two, uh, tutors that work on specific things in the writing center. So we have an advertising committee to get the word out, celebration committee, we have a world language committee. We have a bunch of different committees that all work together to, or that all work within themselves to create or better some part of the writing center. And so this really does allow students to work in small groups and get to know each other better. And it also creates a leadership opportunity for a committee lead, which is one student who is really knowledgeable on that specific committee and is able to quite literally lead those students in creating, you know, creating ads in the advertising committee, how to, you know, get more people in from the ESOL department, that type of thing. And 
Then we also do training for takeovers. So throughout the year, AC3s, which are third year tutors, are always trying to prepare the AC1s and the AC2s um, to take over for next year um, as committee leads. So within the committees, but also in the writing center in general. So when we conduct um, tutoring interviews uh, for new tutors, we really encourage AC2s and the less experienced tutors to conduct those interviews and kind of get a taste of what being a leader in the writing center looks like. We also have tutor leads, and this is for each class of the writing center, and it's a couple of students that are elected. And so these tutors help organize class lessons. There's someone that less experienced tutors can look up to in terms of tutoring sessions or really anything in their life. And these leadership opportunities really make the class peer led and create a welcoming environment that we always want the two T's to see when they walk in. So an example of our committees at work is through advertisements. So as Maddie mentioned, we have an advertisement committee and their main focus is spreading the word of the writing center out to the rest of the school, especially after our year online. We wanna make sure that everyone knows that the writing center is an accessible tool for them regardless of what subject they're struggling in, we wanna help them with their writing assignments. So the advertisement committee will create uh, Instagram posts, TikTok videos, really um, just advertisements on any format, social media, uh, school announcements, just to spread the word. This specific advertisement video was made to uh, help recruit new tutors for next year. So with so many seniors leaving this year, we need new tutors for the incoming years. And we wanted people to know that they can um, interview to become a part of the writing center. So this is an example of what our advertisement committee makes. UWC. Now let's see what they're up to. And here's the rubric for my assignment. Okay, so I see it's supposed to be an APEC format. So you have the assertion. Here at the Writing Center, our main goal is to help tutor our peers. In doing so, we also have the ability to better our own writing. And being a part of the Writing Center also looks great on college applications. These are some of the ideas um, Advertisement Committee came up with. I have some ideas for world languages, so let's meet over here. And I have ideas for celebration, so let's go. Celebrations committee, we plan all the parties that we, we have throughout the year. We celebrate different holidays, and we also just have parties for fun for all the accomplishments that we reach with throughout the year. This can be like waffle parties or like ice cream parties. Guys, we need an advertisement video so people will join the writing center next year. Oh, what if in the beginning we do a fake fighting scene to get everyone hooked? That's, That's a great idea. idea. just an example of our committees at work with that advertisement video and another strategy that we use is observations. So an observation is when a tutor observes a fellow classmate during a tutoring session and in our writing center we really emphasize that the learning is never done so regardless of seniority all tutors do this. So for example an AC3 can observe an AC1 to make sure that they are implementing these strategies in their tutoring session and being comfortable with tutoring in person and also an AC1 can um, observe an AC3 just to make sure that they are looking at different perspectives and different methods of how to handle situations in a tutoring session. And we want to make sure that observations can give our tutors insight into varying styles and methods of tutoring and can help tutors just see how different situations can be handled similarly to our tutoring scenarios. Another way that we help our tutors improve is through tutor feedback. So one of the main ways we do this is through grow and glow activities. So grow and glow activities are typically whole class discussions where everyone goes around in a circle and they reflect on their grows, which is areas they think they can improve upon as a tutor and glows, which is areas they think that they excel in as a tutor. So by going around and reflecting on your grows, you're able to gain advice from other tutors in the room. So if your grow is maybe you're struggling with APEC format. You're not sure how to um, properly format assertions and proofs, things like that. Other tutors may be able to provide advice as to how you can become better at that, or they can help you with that themselves. 
And then as a glow, you're kind of just celebrating your own accomplishments. Like you know what you're good at, these are your strengths, and that's something that you should be proud of. We also have feedback forms from our two T's, the people we tutor. So after every tutoring session, our two T's are given a link that they can fill out and it gives them a chance to reflect upon the tutoring session. So uh, we'll receive it after they've submitted it and it just tells us what we can do better, was their experience beneficial, things such as that. And hearing from the two T's directly allows us to truly reflect on our sessions because we're given direct feedback as to how we can improve as a tutor and as a writing center as a whole. Lastly, we also have binder checks. So every tutor in the writing center has a binder that we house in the back of the classroom. And in that binder, we have reflections for all of our tutoring sessions. So after every tutoring session you conduct, you write a short reflection, uh, you write the subject, the teacher name, and then what you think you did well, what you could have done better. And we also keep our observations in our binder as Regina talked about. And then at the end of the quarter or semester, AC3s or more experienced tutors will grade the other tutors' binders. So it's really just a way to hold everyone accountable in the classroom. We don't grade harshly. We're really just looking to make sure everyone filled out their reflections, did their observations, just to make sure that you're doing what you should be doing in the writing center. And it's ultimately really beneficial because you get comments that say, this is a great reflection, or maybe you can improve upon this weakness with this advice. And so it really just helps our tutors become better prepared for the next quarter of tutoring. So another part of our writing center that's really important in fostering these connections are what we call families. And so these are another small group of students that are assigned to each other at the very beginning of the year. So well, there's no bias. It's not like people are just sticking with their friends. And so these tutors are of very, various like tutoring levels. Normally the family is led by a lead who's an AC3 with a lot more experience. And so this really just allows for the tutors to kind of foster the connections that they couldn't really make online with other tutors and also get to know each other better, which is something that, you know, we would want our tutors to be. And it really, these class bonds that they're creating create that welcoming environment in the writing center that again, we want to tease to see that we want teachers to see, we, that we want other people to see so that they wanna keep coming back to us. And these connections also allow for less experienced tutors to kind of come to their leads and feel comfortable asking for advice and asking for help because they have formed these bonds. And it really does just truly make the writing center more cohesive and beneficial for the tutor, tutors and then further on the two T's, two T's. So one way that we create these bonds with the families is through family bonding activities. So we do family fun Fridays, which is whenever we have the writing center class on a Friday, the tutors will all get together and do a fun activity. So yeah. So these are some pictures for some of the family fun and celebration activities that we've had in our writing center. So on the left, that's when we did a secret snowflake exchange for before our winter break. And this was a good way for us to learn about different people in the class and their interests. And like Maddie said, when we build our internal um, cohesiveness and collaborativeness that helps us outreach to the rest of our community. So we really emphasize the importance of learning about each other and getting to know each other. And then on the right, in our families, during the hall, um, ho during Halloween, we helped decorate pumpkins for each other. And it was really fun to get to express our creativity in a different way and get to work with each other to make one pumpkin as a group. So one segment that we kind of do in collaboration with Family Fun is what we call unpopular opinions. And so this is just kind of an informal debate that we have just among tutors. And it really gets everyone speaking up, um, expressing their ideas. And it really gets some of those less spoken tutors to speak up more. And it really encourages connect, connecting with others. So the, on the next slide, there is a photo of me presenting our unpopular opinion se segment. And on the board, you can see it looks like a video and that's a theme song that a student made um, because he was so engaged and really liked this segment. And so that just is a testament to how fostering these connections through these small activities really does affect the environment of the writing center. 
So right now we're actually going to play our own little version of unpopular opinions. And so basically I'm just going to state something that's a little bit controversial, but it's like a fun, lighthearted topic. And then you guys can chime in and hopefully by the end of it, everyone on the Zoom will know um, everyone else a little bit better. And that's the goal that we also have within our own writing center. So the first unpopular opinion is that it's better to shower at night than in the morning. So if you feel really strongly about this, or if you don't feel really strongly about this, feel free to put your opinions in the chat. And yeah, so I can go if people are thinking or formulating their ideas. I personally think it's better to shower at night because you kind of, you get home and you're dirty and you don't want to put on your clean pajamas like on your dirty self. And yeah, so I, so someone said they're a former athlete and they agree. And so not only do you learn that they like taking showers better at night, but also, oh, now we know someone's an athlete. And so that's kind of, yeah. I agree with the athlete thing as well, because you come home from practice at night and then you definitely want to shower before you get into bed all sweaty. Yeah, so I feel like there's a general consensus in the chat because someone else said that they feel strongly about it. So I definitely also agree. So I think we all pretty much agree that it's better to shower at night than in the morning. So we can move on to another unpopular opinion, or maybe it's a popular opinion. Um, so the next one is that there's no point in making your bed. And so I personally, re I personally relate to this because I go to school <clears throat> and I come home and then I sit on my bed and I do my homework and then maybe I'll take a nap. And so because I'm using my bed so much, I feel like making it after every single time I use it is a little bit redundant and also unnecessary. I actually like making my bed because I know that when I get up in the morning, it's all messed up with the covers all scrambled everywhere. So when I get to bed that night, I like to have it like made up where I can just easily lift up the covers and then get back in. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Sophia because I also like making my bed because it makes my room seem cleaner. And also that way when I'm going back home and doing homework, I feel like at least something is done and that the rest of my mind is more clear. I agree um, with Charlotte. You have a really good point because it does feel better when you get home and your bed is made, but it also is something that I don't always get around to. Yeah. Okay, so thank you everyone for <laughs> talking in the comments. So we do have a couple more unpopular opinions. And this one is that burnt marshmallows are better on s'mores than toasted ones. And what I mean by this is when you're around a campfire, you just stick your marshmallow until in the fire until it burns and then you take it out versus letting it like roast on top for five minutes. And this just makes more sense because it's quicker <laughs> and it creates the burnt taste has just like something. So the texture is great. I see people have very strong opinions on this. Yeah, so I agree with um, Caitlin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I definitely do not like burnt marshmallows. I think they're better when they're toasted because then you just get a light toasting and you don't get any of the burnt taste in your mouth. And why would you want that? I think it's best when you put it in the fire, it lights completely on fire and you have to blow it off. And then you get like that black charred texture. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, Sophia. And I see like a couple of people too are saying it's the it's the texture of it. You get the chard, but then you also get the gooey in the middle and it really puts the whole thing together. Lucas has a good point with golden brown. That's a good one too. Burnt is still better, but golden brown is acceptable. I agree with Lucas. A golden brown is perfect marshmallow. Okay, so this is, so it seems like we're kind of at a standstill with that one. So the next one is that pancakes are better than waffles. And I know they kind of are the same and often people make pancake batter the same as waffle batter, but I just think pancakes can be used in so much more of a variety of ways than traditional breakfast waffles. So yeah. I also like pancakes better. I don't know what it is about them, but whenever I have a pancake, I just feel like it's taken more time and it just feels better, especially I feel more accomplished when I'm eating a pancake opposed to a waffle. So I would definitely agree with pancakes are better. I kind of like waffles better because I feel like waffles, you can pile on the toppings. You can put Nutella, syrup, whatever you want. I know our own writing center is kind of notorious for our waffle parties because we'll cram a bunch of unhealthy food on there. Um, but pancakes, I think, like you're kind of limited to syrup and honey. So 
I would actually disagree with that because just because waffles can hold more syrup, um, as someone in the chat said, and someone else also said pancakes are easier to make. And that kind of also makes them easier. If you're spending less time on making the pancake, then you can spend more time cutting fruit to put on the pancake or some other topping. And pancakes really do go with everything. And so <laughs> the little holds can hold blueberries and toppings don't roll off. But so like there's a little bit of fun in the fact that like when you cut up a pancake and all the toppings kind of like go into the middle or something, I don't know. <laughs> okay. And then our last, um, unpopular opinion is that milk is poured before cereal. I personally don't agree with this. I think you need to pour the cereal so you know how much more to put, so you know, know how much milk to pour in. But we had a very, very large debate about this in our writing center. Okay. <laughs> okay I, so I definitely heard. agree with Maddie. Um, I think you definitely need to put the cereal so you know how much milk to put. But then adding on to that, I'm a person who doesn't put a lot of milk. I like just my cereal to be damp, maybe. I don't want it to be swimming in the milk. Right. Yeah, I do agree with Sophia. I mean, most of the time I do pour my cereal before the milk, but sometimes I pour milk before the cereal if, if I don't, if I feel like I need less milk that day and I need to basically just like put that milk. I don't, first, I just can't explain it. It just works sometimes. So I do. I do. think, I think the thing is like, it just, it's so easy to know how much cereal you want because the milk you can always measure. But once you've poured the, okay. So especially if you pour the milk first, once you pour the cereal in, if you're like, oh, I put too much cereal in, you can't put the cereal back in the box. But if you pour the cereal first, you can say, oh, this is a really full bowl of cereal. I'm going to put some back in the box. With milk, you're not really gonna pour a bowl of milk back into the carton. Well, okay. maybe you do actually, I'm not I judging. Agree. I agree with Seth. I trust no person who pours the milk <laughs> first. <laughs> okay, but if you do pour the milk first and then you get the right amount of milk, then you know exactly how much cereal to put because I don't like too much milk. So that way I know I can put more cereal than milk. Whereas if I pour too much cereal, then I might have to pour cereal back in. But when I pour milk first, I never have to pour the milk back in. So, yeah. I've known Regina for four years, and this is the first time I'm hearing of this. So with this activity, you can learn more about people, even if you already know them extremely well. Yeah. <laughs> so this was just like a fun way of getting to know more people. And I'm definitely glad that we even get to know more people in the chat right now. So we can just get to know people better in our class like this, and it fosters more collaborative environment. So this is really good for when we're tutoring and getting to know each other. So in conclusion, we believe that a lot of these methods, whether it be tutor training or ways that we build better bonds in our writing center, really help make us better tutors. So especially after a year of being completely virtual, it was hard to kind of transfer these tutor training methods online. And so now they need to be especially effective in person because we've had tutors who have never tutored before or even just tutors who have never tutored in person before. So I think that a lot of these methods really help create a better sense of community within our center. It makes people more comfortable with uh, reaching out to other tutors in the writing center and asking for help if they need it. And some of these activities are just really simple ways to become a better tutor, whether you're improving your own strategies or becoming a better writer yourself, it all helps you when you get to that tutoring session. For our last activity, we just wanted to do a brainstorming activity where you guys can either say some ideas that sparked for your own writing centers or just talk about some of your favorite strategies that we mentioned. So feel free to put anything in the chat or come on the mic if you would like to talk about anything that we've mentioned or some new ideas that you've thought of. And if you don't have any new ideas, you can also just say something that we've done that you guys really, really like, or something that you think was your favorite strategy that we've mentioned. Can I ask about Family Fun Friday? Um, is that something that's just for the Writing Center families, or do, is that something that you sometimes also invite school community members to? 
So that is something that we do within the class. So with only the tutors, but engaging other people from outside the center actually is a great idea that could also foster connections. So yeah. And um, while we might not do like Family Fun Fridays um, with outside two teas, we do do some celebrations. Like recently right now, we're planning a celebration with our ESOL students just to get them into our writing center and get to know about our writing center more so that we can foster a good tutor to tea relationship. Can you talk about the nature of that particular celebration? Like how's it gonna work and what is it celebrating? Yeah, so we have a world language committee lead and I'm also celebration lead. So right now I'm working with her to basically coordinate how we're going to have ESOL students come into our class and just have some fun games and activities so that they can just more get to know their tutors. And we can do some, we're planning some writing activities, but also just some like fun relaxing activities similar to unpopular opinions. And to add on to what Regina is saying, so our writing center classes are during the lunch periods. And so we often have the ESOL students come in for a certain amount of time to get tutored. And at least in my class, we have like tutor pairs. So I often tutor the same ESOL girl and we form like a connection. And so having these parties aren't kind of like out of the blue and on a whim. It really is to celebrate someone that we've been working with for almost a whole year and their accomplishments. Okay, so I was going to say any questions, but I do see a question in the chat. So it says, what about tactile toys, poppers, smooth stones, Lego links? So we don't necessarily use those, um, at least in my experience. Um, Regina and Sophie, I don't know if you want to add something about that. I think that Maddie's class gets to um, have more opportunities to do um, tutor ESOL students, but we don't necessarily use those yet. But I think that is a good strategy that we can talk about in our writing center, and that does give us some great ideas. So if anyone else has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or come on the mic. Thank you again for your time. Um, you can find our, our writing center, the Edison Writing Center on Instagram at edison.writing.center. And if you wanna see more of our advertisements that the co advertising committee makes, you can find our TikTok at edisonwc. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>